associated with inverted P waves, what would you guys say that would be? Junctional way, good. The present, the shallow wave that follows the T wave represents which of the following? A, late ventricular repolarization, good. Three, an EKG technician is performing a probe needle. A patient with alert response is to monitor reading no activity on the baseline. Which of the following is an appropriate action for the technician to take? D, check the lead wire, good. All right, the guys are cooking with gas now, good. The black lead on a five lead EKG is placed on which of the following? B, left arm, okay. Five, the technician is performing an EKG on a preoperative patient notices fine artifacts in all of the leads. Which of the following actions should the uh, technician take to correct this problem? B, instruct the patient to relax and breathe quietly. Good. Six, a technician is monitoring a patient who is undergoing a stress test. The technician should collect which of the following data from the patient. B, oxygen saturation. Good. Seven, the technician is verifying lead placement before beginning an EKG for a patient. The patient, or excuse me, the technician should recognize that the right leg electrode serves which of the following purposes. Active ground. C, good job. All right, guys, really good. Talk to that. Eight, a technician is asked to calculate a patient's heart rate from the EKG. Which of the following methods is the most accurate for the technician to choose? Okay. I would have said A, but I, I think with the rationale, if you have any kind of irregularity, you can't use R to R, which is the 1500 method. So if you couldn't, if you had an irregular rhythm, what would be your, your best bet there? Right, the six seconds each. Now, the, we got, this off of like Quizlet. So I'm not, you know, so we don't have the answer for it. And I'm taking. I would have said the 1500 method too, but someplace where I look to confirm that, because even though I do this a lot, I still want to make sure that I'm passing on the best information. Um, they said that the six second, if you had an irregular rhythm, it, that would be the method of choice. So, um, Joe was the best one on that. I mean, I don't know if you might have both of them. It might be a toss up. They're both. Yeah, yeah. Do I go by what the book says? Do I go by? Go with your gut. I go by what the book says. Okay, I can, I can understand that. Number nine, a loose electrode would most likely produce which of the following conditions? C, wandering baseline, good. 10, a technician suspects an ischemic event. Which of the following portions of the EKG tracing should the technician examine? B, T wave, good. Which of the following conditions are present? A, dextrocardia, dextrocardia, the right. 12, the period of time from the start of ventricular depolarization to the start of ventricular repolarization is known. Which of the following? D, QT interval, good job. Okay, 13, that tracing. Okay, what do you guys think that tracing is? Yeah. Yeah. It is toward the eyes. Now, it, it, the thing is, is, that's kind of a tricky question, too, because toward the eyes, the points, toward the points is literally a form of D fib, but what happens is that. But what happens is is that it twists and it is a form of the fifth, but it's a special form, and if you shot this person. Chances are they're not going to convert to a rhythm that gives them a perfusing rhythm. They're going to have to get their magnesium, their electrolyte magnesium, corrected before they have any benefit from the fibrillation. Okay, but again, there we go. That was probably worse. Whereas, 
normal bee fib, there's just nothing there, okay? But with this, we get the twisting of the point, okay? Kind of if you like stretched out a slinky and twisted the slinky, okay? That's what we'd have with corsage, okay? Which of the following is the best method for a technician to verify a patient understands the instructions for wearing a holster monitor? A. Ask the patient to repeat the instructions. Right. Repeat demonstration. Repeat demonstration. 15. The technician is performing a stress test on a patient. 10 minutes into the test, the technician notices that the patient is asymptomatic. Which of the following actions should this technician take? C, continue the test, right. You continue till the physician says the goals have been met. Okay, they've achieved their target heart rate, uh, you know, whatever the case may be. When we did stress tests, we said, we uh, estimated what their uh, max heart rate would be, and we wanted them to get to at least 85% of their max heart rate. So you continue the test. 16, which of the following locations should a technician use to measure blood pressure in a patient who is post-operative following a mastectomy on her right side? Left arm, good, C. A technician is performing an EKG on a patient following the implantation of an artificial pacemaker. Which of the following effects will the pacemaker have on the EKG tracing? A spike will appear, A, good. A technician is monitoring a patient who is experiencing angina during a stress test. Which of the following actions should the technician take? D, notify the provider of the patient's symptoms. While performing an EKG, a technician notices a flat line tracing on the monitor. Which of the following actions should the technician take first? D, check the patient, right? Just because it's shown on the monitor doesn't mean that they're actually flatlining. We want to make sure that their response is that they're in the game, so to say. Uh, what was that, 1920? An EKG technician receives a fax from a, with a cover page that contains a statement, confidential and protected health information on it. Protected health information is covered by which of the following acts? A, Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. Good job. All right, you go to cleaning up on that. A technician is preparing to perform an EKG on a patient with a bilateral leg amputation. The technician should adjust which of the following moves for this patient. Right, lower extremity movement. Good. And remember, we talked about that in class. The different places we could put them. We could put them up here on the iliac crest. We could put them on those lowest ribs. Okay. Twenty-two. Which of the following is in? Excuse me. Is the control when the EKG machine that increases or decreases the voltage of the tracing? D. Gain. Twenty-three. The technician notes multiple small spikes of identical shape when an EKG tracing. The technician should recognize that this finding indicates which of the following complications. B. Alternating current interference. Twenty-four. The technician should look for which of the following identifiers when verifying that D1 on the 12 e EKG was recorded correctly or accurately. I'm sorry. D, upright, or excuse me, a positive R wave, positive R wave, which of course means an upright wave. 25, a technician is preparing to perform an EKG on a patient who has dextrocardia. Which of the following actions should the, tech, should the technician take? B, you're right. Reposition D3 to the right side of the chest at the right sternal ward. Twenty-six. Which of the following is the minimum number of electrodes that may be attached to a patient for holter monitoring? Let's see, five. Now, holter monitoring could be three to eight. Three to eight. Okay. So holter monitoring can be three to eight. Correct. Three to eight meters. Mm -hmm. A technician is performing a 12 lead EKG on a patient. The presence of deep or wide Q waves on the tracing should alert the technician to which of the following conditions. D, myocardial infarction. Good. 
When preparing a patient for an EKG in the sick line position, where should, where should the technician stand to apply the electrode? Um, on the patient's right side. That's right. Um, and, uh, left side. Okay, um, left side. Okay. Left side. A technician is performing an EKG on a patient who has Parkinson's disease. Notice the disappearance on the reading. Which of the following action should the technician take? C. Have the patient put their hands under their buttocks. Good. Which of the following EKG measurements differentiate endoventricular rhythm from junctional escape rhythm? Anybody venture a guess? QRS duration. Okay, junctional escape is going to be about 40 to 60 beats. Okay. It's going to have a normal QRS. Okay. There's just no relation to P waves. Okay, the junctional rhythm, no P waves. The endoventricular, though, wide QRS at a rate of only about 20 to 40 beats a minute. 31. When positioning a patient for a routine EKG, the technician notices the patient is experiencing dizziness. Which of the following positions should the technician place the patient to optimize the patient's breathing? Semi valid. Good. Remember, dyspnea means difficult or labored breathing. So if you lay them flat, if you get a patient that's got COPD or emphysema, you know, any of those pulmonary issues, you're going to have to get them more upright. Okay, so semi fowler Fowler is where you're jackknife, okay, where you're like literally at 90 degrees, but semi fowler is where you're laying back at about 45 degrees. 32, which of the following sinus rhythms has a heart rate of more than 100 beats a minute? Sinus right, tachycardia, you're good. The technician is teaching the patient about ultra monitoring. Which of the following statements by the patient indicates an understanding of ultra monitoring? Okay. I'm allowed to exercise during the test. Okay. Now, this is one that is kind of tough to, to break down. They are allowed to walk, but as far as like heavy, hard exercise, if they get sweaty, there's a leak to come off. Okay. I should avoid caffeine during the test. Okay, you want to go ahead and eat your normal diet and such. I will have electrodes attached to my chest and limbs during the test. No, you're not going to have electrodes on your limbs for a halter. Okay. Okay, I can disconnect the monitor to shower. Definitely can't disconnect the monitor to shower. Okay. So, the best answer there is I'm allowed to exercise during the test. But, again, I, I'm, I'm not exactly 100% sure about this. Okay, I'm not sure exactly what they were talking about. So I'm not sure if there might be an error on this question or what it is. Because to me, there's just no best answer on that. That's where, that's where we always said, too. Yeah. The only thing I could think of. But, uh, I mean, that would be the only thing I'd be supposed to do everything for the shower. Right, right. Uh, 34. Technician is assisting with a stress test for a 50 year old male patient. Which of the following is the target heart rate for this patient? To estimate somebody's target heart rate. Okay. Ideally, when you stress test somebody, you want them to get to their max age related heart rate. And what you do is you take 220 minus 8. Okay, so in our example, the gentleman was 50 years old, so 220 minus 50, of course, is 170 beats per minute. In theory, 220 beats a minute is the max that the heart can be before it goes into defib. Okay, so that's where you use that, to get that 220. That's why you use 220. But Ideally, during a stress test, we would like them to achieve 170 beats a minute. The technician is performing an EKG on the patient, which of the following lines represents a period of zero electric activity. 
isoelectric line, the isoelectric line, correct. So when you guys hear the term isoelectric, this area is right back to baseline, or you could say it's isoelectric. Okay, there's nothing happening electric wise right there. Okay. Methods of calculating heart rate involves counting the number of QRS complexes and multiplying that number by 10. Take a second, that's good. While monitoring a patient during exercise stress testing, an EKG technician should report which of the following observations to the physician. Diaphoresis means sweating. If they're going up to 170 beats a minute, like our example, they're going to be sweating, so that's not that big a deal. Elevated high blood pressure didn't say. Astronomically elevated, or you know, right? Syncope is going to be our best answer because their heart rate's going to go up, their blood pressure's going to go up, they're going to get sweaty, they're going to get flushed in their face. So syncope meaning means what? To pass out. So if they start saying, "Oh, I, I don't feel good. I'm going to pass out." By all means, you want to report that. Thirty-eight. Which of the following rhythm is the PR interval added? A, good, ventricular tachycardia, right, ventricular tachycardia, okay, and B, tach, remember, it's just one wide of bizarre B after another, after another, after another, so there is no PR when all we have is one PPC after another PPC after another PPC after another PPC. Let's see, 39, a supervisor is teaching a technician about telemetry monitoring. Which of the following statements by the technician indicate the need for further teaching? Now, telemetry monitoring is going to be like if you were on a floor in a hospital, okay? So Lisa gets a job in a hospital and she is on a telemetry floor, okay? So I must replace the batteries in the telepack before beginning a new telemetry procedure, okay? That's probably not the case. You're probably going to just Get rid of those every shift, okay? I could remove the leads before the patient goes to sleep. You definitely don't want to do that because a lot of arrhythmias occur during sleep. The patient can ambulate while wearing the monitor. Yes, okay, they can get up in their room and go to the restroom. They can, you know, walk around and so on. The monitor must be removed for an MRI. Yes, okay? Can't wear that in an MRI tube, okay? So your best answer is I should remove the leads before the patient goes to sleep. Okay, you definitely don't want that. Uh, 40, which of the following is a contraindication performing an exercise stress test? Yeah, D. The patient recently experienced mild chest pain. That's probably the reason they're having the stress test. The patient ate four hours ago. Well, that's fine. You just don't want them to eat anything. I think it's three hours. I think it's the typical normal window. The patient has a synchronous demand pacemaker. Hey, that's not any reason not to do a stress test. But if they are in the middle of having an MI, you don't want to aggravate the heart even more and deprive it of oxygen even more by making it work harder. Okay. 41. A technician is assisting with an exercise stress test. The technician noted depressed S T segments and tall peaks T waves. These findings indicate which of the following. B, myocardial ischemia, right. We got a deprivation of the myocardium of oxygen. 42, a technician is teaching a patient about telemetry monitoring. Which of the following statements by the patient indicates an understanding of the teaching? Of the teaching? Okay, I should avoid caffeine while being monitored. I will leave the monitor on while I sleep. The monitor can be removed for showering. I can't walk while wearing monitor. Okay. See, that's another one I'm like, doesn't make much sense. Oh, it doesn't indicate an understanding of the teaching. It indicates an understanding of the teaching. I'll leave yeah. the monitor on while I sleep. I think that's some of the best one because if you can't remove the monitor while you shower, I can't walk, no, that means you want to do your normal stuff. I should avoid caffeine while being monitored. No, you probably want to, but that's part of your normal diet. 
D3, brown with green. D4, brown with blue. D5, brown with orange. D6, brown with purple. All right. 49. Which of the following is most likely to cause base gene interference artifacts? Remember, AC is alternating current. So anything that's got an electric current running through it could potentially cause artifacts. So in that case, I have to be Good. 50. A technician must document which of the following information in the patient's electronic medical record regarding an EKG. Date and time. Okay. Emergency contact. We don't do that. Confirmation that the patient has nothing by mouth. We don't do that. And exam room location. 51. On a 12 lead EKG, the fifth intercostal space mid axillary line is the location for which of the following electrodes? D6. Good call. A technician can move a patient's bed away from the wall to help resolve which of the following artifacts? C. Alternating current. Good. 53. A wide, bizarre QRS complex is a characteristic of which of the following arrhythmias? C. Ventricular arrhythmias. Good call. 54, a technician consisting with an exercise stress test for an adult patient who goes into cardiac arrest. Which of the following actions should the technician take first? Stop the test, right. How long is a typical PR interval? D, 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. How many boxes? Three to five, right. Which of the following is the standard paper speed on an EKG? A, 25, right. If somebody has a really fast rhythm, like they go into a PSTC, you may want to bump it up to 50, but under normal circumstances, it's 25, okay? There is another question on here that talks about changing, changing the paper speed, but I, I never did it in 20 some odd years of doing it, so. But it did mention it, so we just want to make sure that we cover it. The technician is applying the electrodes to a patient prior to a period of ultra monitor. The technician should recognize the electrode wires are distinguished by which of the following? By color. Okay, good. Now, this is. The ultra monitor practice unit that we have. We actually have a practice holter here. And the thing I will tell you guys is make sure if you do holter monitor that you go by the manufacturer standard. But the one that we have, the white electrode goes to the, uh, is below the right clavicle, which is lateral to the mid clavicular line. Okay. Uh, red. <laughs> red is at the top of the sternum. Black, eighth rib, left of the mid clavicular line. Brown for fourth, fifth rib, left of the anterior axillary line. And then green is a reference or brown, eighth rib, right of the mid clavicular line. Now, the only thing I'll say is that we said on uh, a question earlier that culture monitor could be three to eight electrodes. Depends on what your system is set up for as to where you're going to place these. Okay, but this is just a five lead holder. Okay, but go by what your manufacturer says. Okay, if a different company has a different setup, then you know you won't necessarily be able to go by these. Okay, but this is 
something along the lines of what you need to be shooting for. Okay. But again, learn your uh, equipment and learn what the manufacturer guideline is. Okay. Uh, let's see, 58, correct? An EKG technician is verifying a patient's understanding of holster monitor procedures. Which of the following should it should the technician include in the checklist for the patient? Okay, operate the event marker. Okay, that means when that holster, there's a little button. If you do feel something out of the ordinary, you click it. So it's a whole lot easier for the technician going through and evaluating the EKG to find a problem. Uh, document only. Document only unusual activities. No, document everything that you do throughout the course of the day. But if you feel something odd when you're going to the restroom or when you're eating or when you walk up a flight of stairs, then definitely document that too. <laughs> there are no hygiene restrictions. Oh, yeah, there are. You can't get in the shower. You can't take a bath. Okay? And then monitor the heart only during exercise. No, you're not exercising for a whole 24 hours. They want this monitor to monitor everything you do in 24 hours. Okay, sleep, eat, go to the restroom, whatever. 59, which of the following directions should a technician give to a patient who is scheduled for an exercise stress test? Okay, in this case, it's which answer? D, don't consume caffeine for three hours, good. 60, a technician is teaching the patient who has a prescription to wear a holster for 24 hours with a shortness of breath. Which of the following information should the technician include? Yeah, D, you should document activities in a diary. Okay. 61, a technician is performing a global EKG and notices the patient's heart rate is 44 beats a minute. Which of the following does this heart rate reflect? Bradycardia, good. Which of the following ways presents, or excuse me, represents atrial depolarization? Which of the following ways represents atrial depolarization? T way, good. A technician. Uh, is giving instructions to a patient on the use of an ambulatory monitor. Which of the following statements by the patient indicates an understanding of the teaching? Okay. That would be, I will check the monitor's green light. That just means that all systems are go, right? 64, a technician is caring for a patient who his EKG monitor shows to be fit. Which of the following actions should the technician take first? Do what? I'm sorry. Okay. C, right. Assess the patient's responsiveness. Remember, when you take CPR, for example, if your patient you know, goes down, you're going to say, hey, 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 are you okay? Are you okay? You want to check their responsiveness. Okay. 65, a technician is preparing to perform an EKG on a pediatric patient. Which of the following actions should the technician take to prevent crowding of electrodes? B. Apply the chest read B3 to the right side of the chest. If you have a very small child, all those electrodes may get too crowded, all those precordial electrodes. So you want to move B3. Okay? Remember, B3 goes between B2 and B4. Okay? So we want to place it in the middle. Okay? But in the pediatric patient, we're going to shift it over to the right side. Okay. 66, a technician is preparing a 26-year-old female patient who has intermittent palpitation for outpatient testing. Which of the following tests should the technician expect to be prescribed for this patient? B, a holder. A technician is reviewing an EKG strip with a QRS complex of 0 0.2 seconds. The technician should identify this finding as an indication of which of the following. Remember, normally the QRS is 0.04 to 0 0.10, one to two and a half little boxes. So that would mean what? Quicker pace, right. Ventricles are firing at a quick pace. 68, the technician is performing an EKG on a patient who has ventricular pace. Which of the following can the technician expect to see on the tracing?
We know some of you pull the QRS complex, okay? So it really shouldn't affect the wind though, okay? So it should be within normal limits, okay? So it should be a pacing spike followed by a narrow QRS. 69, a thin, perfectly straight vertical line appears at random intervals on the EKT tracing. This is an indication of each of the following. That's going to be an indicator for a demand pacemaker. A fixed rate pacemaker means before every atrial contraction, in other words, before every T wave or before every QRS complex, there is a pacing spike because it is completely pacing the heart. But a demand pacemaker is so intelligent that it can literally pick up when it needs to step in and stimulate either the atria or the ventricles or maybe both. Okay, So we're only seeing the pacer spike randomly. That just means that sometimes the pacemaker of the heart most likely is given out. Okay, not all the time, but say to keep us from having sinus uh, uh, sinus exit block or sinus arrest or something like that, that's when the pacer kicks in. It's not every beat, okay? it's just once in a while. Okay? So that's a demand pacemaker. When the pacemaker of the heart demands the help from the Implanted pacemaker, it kicks in. The technician is using the six second method to calculate patient heart rate. The technician used six complexes within six seconds on the tracing. Which of the following is the patient's heart rate? 60, right. The technician is performing an EKG on a patient who has a permanent pacemaker. Which of the following uh, indicates that the pacemaker is firing but failing to capture? C, the pacemaker spikes are not followed by complexes. Good. 72, which of the following leads demonstrates condition changes during an anterior wall myocardial infarction? All right, this is something I want to go over a little bit too. Normally, when we are looking at a 12 lead, if we're looking at the lateral portion of the heart, we're looking at one AVL, V5, and V6. Inferior is going to be two, three, and AVF. V3 okay. and V4 are going to be the ones that we typically look at for anterior, and then septal, V1 and V2. But the septum is in the front of the heart, so to say. If we're looking at the heart, we know the septum is the muscular divider between the right side of the heart and the left side of the heart. Okay, and we've got V1 and V2. We do have some left anterior coverage out of V2. I would say that this is kind of the exception, and those are the rules. Because to me, V1 and V2 are septal just because of the location. But I did extra research, and in some cases, 
they might consider B2 an anterior heliodor, okay? not just viewing septum. Okay? But again, that would be the exception, not the rule. So it's going to be D. Yeah, When running a five lead DKT on a patient, which of the following electrodes serves as the ground electrode? B. Okay, it's going to be the green. Okay, right leg, just like in a 12 week. 74. An 80 year old patient who has a history of Parkinson's disease is scheduled for a routine EKG. Which of the following artifacts will most likely be present when the EKG is due to the client's condition? Somatic tremor, right? Good. 75. The technician is preparing the patient for a stress test. Which of the following lead group should the technician move to non standard location? Middle leads, right. Can't have uh, arm leads while I'm holding on to the bar of the treadmill, it'll pick up vibration. I can't walk with leg leads on my ankle. 76. Which of the following terms describes the ability of a pacemaker stimulus to successfully depolarize the heart chamber that is being paced? Capture. Good. 77. When monitoring a patient during stress testing using the Broke 3 protocol, at what point in time of each phase should the technician monitor and record the patient's blood pressure? Should each of the bruise protocol stages last three minutes? Should be at the minute and a half mark. Uh huh. 78. Which of the following methods should a technician use to determine the regularity of a patient's heart rhythm? Measure the R to R interval with a pair of calipers. Seventy-nine. In which of the following locations should a technician apply a sigma manometer? Of course, that's a blood pressure cuff, and you're going to constrict the brachial artery. Okay, so it's going to be on the upper arm because that's what constricts the brachial artery. Uh huh. Right brachial in this case. Eighty. Which of the following parts of EKG tracing should a technician review for information about ventricular repolarization? A, T wave, good. Uh, 81, an EKG technician is preparing to perform a 12 week EKG on a patient who has cat on her left arm and left leg. Which of the following location should the technician apply the limb movement? A, upper chest and lower abdomen. Okay. If they had a cast on their left arm and their left leg, you could easily put it here on their lowest rib. You could put it on an anterior iliac crest. And then instead of putting it on their wrist, you could put it under their clavicle or anterior deltoid. Okay. A standard EKG paper, excuse me, standard EKG paper is sensitive to damaging effects from which of the following? E. When a 12 lead EKG technician notes that the QRS complexes have a width of less than three small squares, these QRS complexes indicate which of the following? Normal conduction. Bundle branch blocks can be wide. Okay. 84. Which of the following describes an atrioventricular pace rhythm? So that means atria and the ventricle of a pace. So if it's an atrioventricular pace rhythm, So we know this is the P Q R S C atrioventricular pace. There's going to be a pace spike there, pace spike there. There's not obviously going to be one before the P because that's where the ventricle is repolarized. So what's our best answer? I heard a lot of mumbling. Okay. 
Yep, you're exactly right. Good, good, good. Everybody was saying that it was loud and proud, so I want to make sure. But we got spikes before every one of them. 85. Wicked following is an appropriate action for a technician to take to ensure accuracy when performing it quality. You're right. Resolve artifacts from the EKG prior to showing the fire. That's why when we did those in class, if they were a little bit sketchy, I said that's not diagnostic quality. Remember, it's got to be nice and clean. So resolve that if we have to reposition the leads or tape them down or shave them or whatever. 86. Dyspnea reflects a change in which of the following vital signs? Respiration. Right. Dyspnea means labor breathing. An EKG technician is preparing to perform telemetry monitoring on a patient. Which of the following location should the technician attach the electrode? Yeah. yeah, we're not going to put them on the head, obviously. It's not an EEG, it's not an electroencephalogram. We're not going to put them on the legs, okay? These people are ambulatory. Uh, we're not going to put them on the arms. They may have IVs or whatever the case may be. Telemetry patients are basically going to be your uh, cardiac floor patients, so we're going to have them all on the chest. Uh, 88. A technician is performing an EKG under the supervision of a physician or a patient who is experiencing a supraventricular tachycardia. The tapered feed is set to 50 millimeters per second. Which of the following actions should the technician take to ensure the best possible trace? Okay. Yep, continue recording the EKG at 50 millimeters a second. Normally it's set at 25. But if it's a fast rhythm, if somebody goes into a PSVT, you may want to go to that faster rate. In this case, they already have it at the faster rate. Okay. So just continue. A technician is measuring a patient's pulse oximetry. Which of the following measurements should the technician use? D, oxygen saturation. Pulse oximetry is oxygen saturation. Nine, the technician is monitoring a patient during a stress test. Which of the following situations during stage one of the test should the technician report to the physician? Patient blood pressure increases from 100 to 120. Well, that's normal. You're exercising. You're going to go up some. The patient's heart rate increases from 99 to 105. Again, your exercise is going to go up. The patient's heart rate drops from 105 to 99. That's a little bit out of the ordinary, but D is the biggest one because in stress testing or in any kind of uh, exercise, like in cardiac rehab, if our patients drop during exercise, 20 millimeters of mercury or more, that was cause for concern. So. Patient systolic blood pressure drops from 130 to 110. That's cause for concern. 91. Which of the following portions of the EKG reading is created by an electrode that is placed on the fourth intercostal space to the left of the sternal border? V2. Okay, good. The technician is performing an EKG on a patient who is experiencing atrial fibrillation. In order to calculate the patient's heart rate, which of the following methods should the technician use? Your second, your call. Which of the following describes a positive deflection that occasionally happens prior to the B wave? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. U wave. Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest with you, 20 some odd years of doing that, I didn't think it was wave. Okay. Like I said, there's a couple things on here, like that V2 calling, calling that an inferior lead. I mean, he was always separate, but hey, I'll see if you build the tool that they can spend much enough to find that good information. The second wall of the heart is viewed by which of the following leads? Of course, you know that's what? Continuous cardiac monitoring typically uses either a modified chest lead or which of the following leads? What did we say was monitoring leads? Lead two, good. Which of the following is the highest priority for a technician when monitoring a patient during an exercise stress test? Yep, provide the patient data, good. 
97, a technician is verifying the calibration of the PKG machine. The technician knows that the standard calibration mark should be which of the following amplitude. Number five, ten, right, ten small blocks, a box. After performing a non-standard EKG on a patient, the game setting should be returned to which of the following as the standard. B, right, 10 millimeters is the same as 10 small boxes. The okay, question we had above. 99, C-wave inversion, ST segment changes, and then a pathologic Q-wave indicates which of the following. A, a completed myocardial infarction. Okay. Basically, what that means is a better phrase would have been an okay. usually don't see the Q wave develop uh, until after the cardiac myocardial infarction has already passed. Okay. So it's been some time since it actually occurred. 100. When placing electrodes for a HOSA monitor on a patient, which of the following resources should a technician consult? Ah, the manufacturer's guy, good. A technician is performing an EKG on the patient, which of the following findings is a primary indication of cardiac compromise? Angina pectoris. I've never heard it called pectoral angina. Okay, but angina pectoris. Okay, that means chest pain, of course. Which of the following instructions should the technician give when preparing a patient for a period of ultra monitoring? Continue with the regular exercise routine because we're not going to replace the electrodes for a bit of it. Better leave them on the hold for 24 hours. Sleep on your stomach to avoid electrode displacement. I think they'd prefer you sleep on your back. Continue with your regular bathing routine. We know that's not the case. There was another question. See, there's there's to me, there's some contradictory statements on this because one question we had before, the best answer was sleeping position. Well, to me, we were always advised to try to sleep on your back because you had this device on you in the front and sleeping on your stomach or anything else was not really going to work. But anyways, um, we're just still with what we got. A stress test must be stopped when a patient experiences which of the following. B, cold and clammy skin. Eupnea is true breathing. That's okay. Mild fatigue. Hey, you're exercising. You may have mild fatigue. Flush face. If you're exercising, you may have a red skin. But cold, clammy skin, that means we're having some complications. Patient reports dizziness when she's sitting up following the EKG. The technician should anticipate which of the following findings. C, postural hypertension. Or the other term, and if you guys remember this, we didn't call it postural hypotension, hypotension, we called it orthostatic hypotension. Orthostatic hypotension. I go from a seated position to a standing position and the pull of gravity pulls the blood all down towards my ankle. The blood goes away from my head. I start to get light and I'm likely to have syncope. Okay, I get all dizzy and I may just go down. Okay, the body's actually fainting to protect itself because the pull of gravity isn't pulling the blood down if you're laying flat on the ground. Okay, so you may hear this term a lot in the clinic. Okay, I've never heard of. Uh, Postural hypertension, to me, it's always been orthostatic hypertension. No, it's C. Yeah, yeah. The answer is postural, but like I said, I've never heard that term before. 105, the technician completes an EKG and notes that the strip shows erratic spikes. Which of the following is the cause of this artifact? A would probably result um, right in no reading. Okay, patient is cold and shivering. That's probably not going to create erratic spikes, though. Those would be 
almost like somatic tremor. I'm shivering because I'm cold. It almost be like somebody had Parkinson's. Okay. Okay. The patient's skin was poorly prepped. Could be. Could be. AC interference, right? AC interference. Okay. Because remember, we had the question earlier about the infusion pump. Okay. Again, AC interference. Remember, we also talked about pulling the table away from the wall to prevent a C interference. Okay. Most likely. Mm -hmm. 106. During the stage, during the first stage of a Bruce Protocol stress test, the patient reports feeling lightheaded and states that he is going to pass out. Which of the following actions should the technician expect the providers to take? Yes, stop the test and help the patient to a nearby chair. Always going to stop the test. You don't want to have a, the, the treadmill bell rolling and you think you're going to be able to put them down on a rolling uh, bell and do CPR. Which of, the, uh, which of the following findings is a constant indication to a patient undergoing a stress test? Okay. Yes, the part, Kelly, right. 108. Atrial conduction on an EKG is represented by which of the following? Uh -huh. D, keyword, good. Which of the following tracings indicate atrial flooding? B, okay, flutter waves are soft tooth interference. Okay, F waves mean flutter waves. Remember, telltale sign of atrial flutter and soft tooth appearance. 110, a technician is preparing to clean the EKG table. Which of the following actions should the technician take? Yeah, okay, we're not going to use povidone iodine. That's what you typically use with a skin prep. You're not going to use dry heat sterilization. You're not going to use steam heat. So you're going to use an alcohol based cleanser. 111, which of the following scenarios demonstrates an EKG technician's proper understanding of patient confidentiality? Right. A technician performing an EKG on a Spanish speaking patient asks another technician to translate for them. 112. If an EKG machine says 50 millimeters a second, how many large boxes are present in a six second strip? <laughs> There's 30 under normal circumstances at 25 millimeters a second. Okay, so if we speed up to 50 millimeters a second, right, there'd be 60. Okay, good. An EKG technician is preparing a patient for a 12 week EKG. So which of the following limb electrodes produces the AEF reading? Remember on Eindhoven's triangle, okay, if we've got our human body here, okay, this is right arm, left arm, left leg, okay, right leg is the brain, okay, so ABF is going to be not foot, okay, but leg, okay, left leg, okay, left leg, left leg, left foot, okay, we're all on the same page, we got it, okay, good, good, remember, right leg is the ground, okay, that electrode, if it comes off, hey, we can still have a successful EKG, okay, but in this case, ADF, think of that as being left foot, left foot. Uh, 114. A constant PR interval of 0.28 seconds indicates which of the following types of velocity. Remember, the PR interval normally is going to be 0 0.12 to 0 0.20. So if it's 0 0.28, okay, that's more than three to five boxes or more than 0 0.2. So that's going to be what? Now, second degree, 
It's consistent, a constant PR interval of from two to A, first degree R block. Good. Remember, first degree R block looks okay other than having a longer than normal PR. Okay. All right. Anybody got any questions on any of this stuff? I did?